We went through six MP412Cs in a year. Uh, we actually blew up a Lamborghini Huracan engine uh, on the racetrack and uh, the, actually the, the piston shot straight out of the bottom of the engine. Under load, it was a big smoky mess. Took two hours to clean up the racetrack full of tiny, tiny pieces of Lamborghini piston. Fortunately, that was covered under warranties. Uh, that, really, that really saved us in that situation. The worst manufacturer as far as warranty goes has been McLaren. We call it the year of the McLaren. The MP412C is an amazing car. It's fast, it's got that amazing V8 turbo whine. I mean, it's super quick. It was one of the most advanced cars when it came out up against the 458 Italia, which we'd all driven. And that thing shows up and we're like, this thing feels like it's from the future. Amazing car, but we drive these cars on racetracks all day long. So these cars will turn hundreds and hundreds of laps on a racetrack in a, sing in a single day. And manufacturers, I don't think, really build the cars for that scenario. So of course, these cars will start to overheat. Sensors start to fail due to heat. But the thing about McLarens is they're so technologically linked up, obviously, that one sensor will trip out a whole car. The car will shut down just because like maybe a, an exhaust sensor or, or a transmission sensor, something like that. So the car basically just goes into limp mode and won't, won't work. We went through six MP412Cs in a year. All of them had issues that made them almost unrepairable and, and none of them recovered under any sort of warranty. So we just basically had to flip these broken McLarens Fast forward to the 570S comes on the market. We're like, all right, sweet. Hopefully they had you know, rethought this car, which they did. They built it. It was a whole new car, essentially. Lots of excitement. Our customers were really excited about the car. You know, we launched it with big fanfare and promotion. And immediately the very first event, the thing starts to show similar issues to the MP4. The problem is we've got, in a given weekend, we'll do anywhere from 1,000 to 1,200 drives in a four-day weekend uh, when, when our experience comes to town. And of that, let's say there's 200 maybe McLaren bookings at the time. And the problem is that now we have to displace 200 people. It delays all these people. They had their hopes up to drive this car. Now we're trying to move them into other cars if, if, they're, if they're willing to. It creates kind of a customer service nightmare. So after probably six months of that happening, where again, we're, you know, all right, we think it's fixed. We go up to the next event and the thing breaks within a day or two and now we're displacing customers again and again, and we just decided to, you know what, we, we can't do this again, so we had to get rid of this McLaren. The problem is, the last time the car broke, it had a, a full-on engine malfunction. It had to, had to replace the engine, um, so that's, you know, a hundred plus thousand dollar deal. McLaren had voided the warranty because it was, it was broken on a track in the way that we had been using it. So, uh, apparently they're not happy with a third party providing driving experiences in their cars, on racetracks, they weren't happy with it, and so it became a you know a paperweight essentially. It had to sit, and it was hard to flip a car with a McLaren you know engine that needed to be replaced. Um, so we just had quite a few run-ins with that. That's why there's no McLarens in our fleet currently because they're just not fun to work with. As you probably know, there's uh, a lot of issues with the Porsche GT3 engines, the 991 version ones. When they came out, there was a recall on the engines. Um, usually you think that's one of those things that won't affect you, but uh, we actually went through, we've been through four different GT3s, all had to have the engines uh, swapped due to them just straight blowing up or, or seizing on the racetrack. So um, the, the first story that came to mind actually was we were at Barber Motorsports Park. Uh, we were doing a, we were working with Chip Ganassi and Ganassi Racing, they were entertaining some of their sponsors. So we had Joey Hand out at the racetrack driving this GT3 around just flat out. Uh, entertaining people, thrilling them. After he was done driving it, a bunch of guests got to get in and drive the car. And uh, so they're out, we did uh, maybe a hundred drives that day. On the very last lap of the entire day, this guy is coming around the last turn at, at Barber Motorsports Park and the car just sh shuts off, seizes, and just momentum the thing into the pit, came to a coast. And we're like trying to diagnose what's going on here, clicking it, nothing's happening. The engine has seized up, it's broken. That was our first experience with the GT3 engine. And we're like, wow, this was, we were really excited about this car. It was, it was one of our first GT3s, it was black. It had a, uh, the red roll cage behind it. It was a club sport package. It was an awesome, awesome car. Uh, it had a Sharkworks exhaust on it. You know, fortunately Porsche covers that type of thing. They've been really good with warranties. So we got that on a flatbed, got it back to a dealership later uh, that week and, and they handled that one. We went through two more Porsche GT3s, a white one and a silver one, both had the same issues. Uh, and then the fourth one was, was kind of another really fun story for me. So 
I wasn't there for, the, for when the engine seized, but I know that we had shipped the car off to Porsche. It was sitting there getting an engine swap. It was around the 4th of July weekend and I was getting prepared to uh, propose to my now wife. So uh, the day before, it was 4th of July weekend, we've got my car packed. At the time I had a BMW 335M Sport, fun car, good for long journeys like that. My wife thinks that we're gonna be taking that car on this trip. The day before we're leaving, I'm in the office and I hear someone say, we've gotta put a thousand miles on this brand new engine before we take it to the track next weekend. So I was like, hey, I'm actually gonna do an exactly 1100 mile round trip to my lake house this weekend. I'll volunteer to do it. So a little bit of backstory too. So my wife uh, grew up her, with her dad racing Porsches. She's got a huge affinity for them. You know, she's the one who points them out in traffic or will say, ooh, hey, look at that one, you know. We pack the BMW up, we're heading out of town. We take a little bit of a different way out of town to the Porsche dealership. She has no idea what's going on. As we're driving up to the Porsche dealership, we're just kind of going past it, some of those really long dealerships. And she starts instantly going into her mode of, ooh, look at the Porsches. She's like, we should pull in and buy one, you know. As I'm like going into the turn lane, I'm signaling to turn in to the Porsche dealership. She's like, what the heck, what are you doing? What are we doing here? And I was like, you see that white GT3 right there? Like, we're gonna take that one to the lake. And she's like, are you serious? Like, what, what's the story here? So we go in, get the keys. It was a really seamless process. They were very you know, nice about the fact that they had just replaced our engine. They re reassured me, you know, make sure you break this thing in. You know, you want to go through the gears, hang on to it in like, uh, you know, certain RPM range at 70 miles an hour and so on and so on. So she's still a little bit confused. So we, we take the luggage out of the BMW. We just had two roll, uh, kind of roller pieces of luggage. And the funny thing was previous to that, she's, I'm trying to make sure that she's constrained to this one small piece of luggage because she didn't understand why I was being such a stickler about it. Now all of a sudden it clicks because we could fit two roller luggage pieces right into the hood of a GT3. Anyway, pack up the Porsche, hit the road, had an awesome weekend, drove it to my lake house at Lake of the Ozarks. It's this old 1940s cabin. We pull up in this brand new GT3 in park and the neighbors are really confused about why this car was pulling down this, this old, you know, kind of desolate street. But anyway, we got to enjoy the GT3 for the weekend. Uh, that weekend I took it out to buy big fireworks, you know, and I pulled up to the fireworks shack. It's a, one of those tent firework stands pull up in a GT3 and I load the front with $500 worth of mortars and fireworks and the guys are just scratching their head like, what in the hell? They, they were all confused when I actually popped the hood first to begin with. Anyway, so that, that night with the fireworks and all that, Dom Perignon did the whole thing. We were on my dock, we we're firing fireworks off and I uh, finally got to you know, take a knee and propose and the Porsche really just kind of added a whole nother element of, of cool to that experience and, and she, so it's not, we'll never forget. Um, on the way home that weekend, we're taking selfies in the Porsche and she's got a ring out, you know, like, you know, sent it to her parents and stuff. So that was a really cool experience, all thanks to a, uh, a, a seized up Porsche engine. So, so four Porsche engines in a matter of, uh, that, was, that was all probably in, in a year, actually. They've all been swapped out since then. Um, I know they went through another recall, but fortunately, I think all of our swaps are after the second recall. And so now we're waiting on the, the 991.2s for the next for the next GT3s.